Hi guys, it's Sandy here. And I just finished this little journal. I'm, I'm telling you what, I'm such a mess with this thing. But um, this is Margaret Ann. And this is only the second time I've ever tried a super fold out journal. Trifold, I call it a trifold, but it's like no, oh, it's, it's, I don't think that's it. Anyway, this is the cover, Margaret Ann. And uh, this is a feather and old screw that my husband found in the yard. Rusty. And the spine. And the back. And these papers are digitals. I've got to really do better at remembering who does what. But anyway, you open it up this way. So you've got actually two journals facing each other. So the first time you open it, you've got this. You've got the front and the back back there. This is a tag. Love these little joyful children images by Tracy Fox. I'm going to try to keep it in frame. This is the middle spine and um, this is a, I made a pocket out of a piece of lacy paper and stuck her in it so she comes out and then this one is on this flap. Then it opens, let me scoot it down here, it opens like this, so see this is one journal, and then you open it, so I have three spines, and one, two, three, four covers, so to speak, two coffee dyed paper journals, here is the inside, and this is an image that I glued to corrugated cardboard, laces, sari silk, and the paper in the background has the lace and uh, music on it. And this forget-me-not, I thought that was appropriate, <laughs> forget-me-not. I don't know that I'll ever make another one of these again, so don't forget this one. And um, I don't know, but um, I haven't decorated the pages, and I don't think I will. I think I will just leave that for to journal in. This is a loaded pocket of a great photograph like we used to have back in the 30s and 40s. And uh, then there's an old letter, two old letters back here behind the pocket. So I opened the envelope, glued the bottom part, left the flap undone, and let it be a pocket beside and inside, back on the back side and inside. And then this is the main middle spine with the lace on it that holds the two journals together. And uh, like I told you before, I stuck her in here. You can journal on the back of her. But this is the main spine, which this spine is, I gotta look back, it's like three inches. The other two spines are one and a quarter or something like that. And then you gotta, you gotta figure out your measurement so that this closes. You gotta pay attention to what you're doing, which isn't always my strong point. But this is the bottom then of this journal. Or a cover, I mean, back, front, whatever. But this little girl, oh my gosh, so sweet. She looks like one of our granddaughters. That's the way, she's got super curly hair and she looked like that when she was little. 
And what I do, I, I take all my scraps and cut things in half. This I had cut off of the end of this. It was too long. So as I cut it off and laid it down next to me, I looked over and it looked like a heart. So I just picked that up, stuck that on. Now this, this is crooked on purpose. I turned her on purpose for dimension and texture and interest. So I have taken an extra piece scrap of music and it, torn it. I hand tear ink, copy dye, hand tear all my pages. I don't use a decal ruler, nothing like that. I enjoy doing it the hard way, <laughs> but it's more satisfying to me. And then I glued on an old piece of corrugated cardboard, ripped the paper off of each side so I could get the glue to really stick, glued the picture on, then the lace, then the ephemera, then the sari silk. And, um, but this is great paper because it gives dimension. This is the other spine, and this is actually loose. If I untie this, these are journal pages that I glued the ribbon and left the journal loose. So you can take it out, you can write, you can put it back in and tie it back up. Some more little giggling children, which I loved. But isn't this interesting? I'm just really happy with this this morning, how this turned out. And then it folds up like this. And the back, this lady is on the back. And this particular crocheted piece had loose strings and I left it. I like to do things like that. And the spine, it's all lace, because this group of journal pages is being held in by a glued ribbon. And this group of journal pages, I used a hidden spine. So then my thinking is to put a latch on here that is in the mail from Amazon and we'll see if I think I can get it on here even and have it look nice. If I think I'm going to mess this up, I'm not doing it. I'm going to put a piece of antique chiffon ribbon around it and tie it that way. But um, she's the dimensions. I'm not really sure. She's bigger than my sugar britches journal. She's more like, she might be five, five by six, and then eighths of inches. I'm not sure. I didn't, didn't really. It fit together and I was just so excited. But um, like I said, it has the four pieces, which are fronts and backs of the journals, the big three inch spine to put the whole thing together and then two spines for the journals, which are these and they're inch and a half. So, um, I do ship in the United States and I send things priority. This one, you know, my journals are reasonable, but this one, I have to say, I'm not going to let this one go <laughs> very, very cheap. That was my kitchen with all this strung out. <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's been a little inconvenience, but, um, you can private message me if you're interested, but she'll be closer to 150 and um, uh, $10 shipping to go priority, and that does insure it. So, and it will tell, take a special box because you see how I've used, uh, um, what do you call it? Cheesecloth, copy dyed cheesecloth. Look down through there. It's sort of neat to look at it from the top. Uh, 
but yeah, I wouldn't part with her for less than a hundred or for yeah, less than a hundred and fifty because I think I may have a hard time to re re you know parting with this one. But here's another piece of ephemera I glued and I like to pull it up and wrinkle it up and put a little key in. Uh, interestingly enough, this little feather, our sofa, has a feather stuffing. It's a really comfortable, beautiful sofa in my stepson told me the other day he says I found this feather in the living room what I'm not sure how this got in the living room I said oh it came out of the sofa so I laid it aside and later that evening I went okay I'm gonna use that on here so always pay attention to the trash at the edge of the woods <laughs> pieces of bark all the different things you see, all the elements. Um, if you're doing a real vintage antique look like this, they add so much to the, the personality. And I made this pocket out of a different, let's see, Birdie Darling comes out of here, and here's one, but then this is a different digital. If I made a pocket and um, then I used a solution and rusted the pins and put the sorry silk, layered the cheesecloth and stuff and glued it all down so it's anchored. But that kind of stuff adds so much to the personality of the journals. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you like her. This is Margaret Ann. And I have another one. I'm going to upload a journal today, but it's a gift for a stepdaughter. So I'm not going to post it until I give it to her Saturday. And I do want you to see that one because that's got some pretty interesting elements in it too. So thank you. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.